hey, you guys really seem to like our first chip tray episode, so I think we're going to keep making them. If this is your first, the idea is pretty simple. A lot of things around the shop have to get done, but aren't really enough to make a video on their own. So we still try to keep the cameras running, uh, and every now and then we put them all together and clean out the chip tray of projects and a hard drive space. 4K files are huge. Uh, I don't think we've shown much 3D printing lately, but we still use it a lot. There's a new kind of 3D printer on the market that's started to become a little more common that uses UV cured resin instead of melty plastic. The first ones are pretty expensive, but then there's this Anycubic Photon that goes for under 500 bucks. A lot of reviews focus on arts and crafts applications like figurines and sculptures, which Groot approves of, but actually it's really great for prototype engineering things. It takes a little bit to get your tolerances tuned in, but parts come out looking like injection mold or cast resin, which I guess this kind of is cast resin. Uh, really helpful for brackets and small assemblies. Uh, give us a shout if you have any questions. Oh man, our poor old bandsaw. Uh, I see these everywhere on other channels in different colors, and I think they're all the same import uh, point of sale devices. Uh, it was never good, and it got worse with abuse, and we finally came to a place where we needed to either fix a few things on it or finally take it out to the bare grass and put it down. I guess I just wasn't ready to give up. Uh, the top surface was milled from the factory, but I can't figure out how since it was never anything close to flat. In fact, the ledge on the end was about a sixteenth inch lower than the rolling hills of the main surface. Uh, the slots for clamping things looked like they were cast from a part that spent a few years in seawater, so that seemed worth cleaning up too. The base is really a marvel of engineering. They carefully set it up so that when the saw part is vertical, the weight is perfectly balanced over the back wheels maximizing the chance that the saw will tip over whenever you swing that top away to retrieve your part. I think that would help eject the workpiece, and then all you'd have to do is pick up the saw off the ground and start the next cut. Um, I mean, not this has ever happened. Extending the base by even a few inches completely solved this uh, feature, other than stopping slightly short here because I ran out of welding gas. I did finish adding some supports, but maybe forgot to push the record button on the camera. Either way, the saw is much less likely to eject. These little things actually made the saw totally usable and saved us a few bullets. The welding table is working out great. Uh, it hasn't turned into a taco yet, but it did need a couple of hooks for torches. Uh, yay, torch hooks. We'll add more things to this later. And last up, we love doing YouTube things, but you've probably heard that it takes twice as long to make something when you're trying to film it. Things that keep you from doing things aren't good things, so we've been trying some things that make things easier. Uh, here's Mike from the past to explain these things. Things. Thanks, Future Ryan. So I've always wanted to make a camera mount out of one of these mag bases. They've got plenty of holding power, and I think as long as we use a decent enough arm, it's gonna be good. So let's give it a shot. I'm moving the welding cart around, not this thing. Now this, at the very top, yeah, you can turn it a little bit, but that's way more force than the camera will ever see. It's not gonna sag on me or anything. And this bottom joint is much stronger than that. You can, you can torque it over if you really want to. Of course, I can probably tighten this down too, but that is gonna do it. Awesome. All right, well, hopefully that'll bring you some more interesting camera shots in the future and a pretty easy build. All right, see you guys.